Escrow in the trenches, days of drama, when the contract changes after it enters escrow. When supply is low and demand is high, the sale of real estate takes a turn into bidding wars. Prices skyrocket and buyers will do whatever they think will make their offer stand out. We have heard of 50 offers for one property, outrageous overbidding, offers of country club memberships, cars, and other exotic items to go along with the offer. This trench story was written in August of 2021, and we all remember how crazy the market was the last few months and how desperate some buyers were. To get the offer accepted, the potential buyer had to make it attractive to the seller. Tens of thousands over listing price? Check. 50% down payment? Check. No loan or appraisal contingency? Even better. All cash? Excellent. We'll take that offer. What many of the sellers do not realize during this time of frenzy is that it is all a strategy to get them to accept this particular offer over all other 10, 15, or 50 different ones that have come in. It can be a war zone out there and everyone will use whatever they have in their arsenal to win. The presentation of offers can be full of drama between the seller's agent versus all those buyer's agents. Then once a decision is made, the approved contract goes into escrow. But unfortunately, Sometimes the drama continues and escrow becomes embroiled in it simply by being that neutral third party. The unfortunate consensus out there is that the negotiation between buyers and sellers do not end once the purchase contract is fully signed and enters escrow. What can happen in the aftermath after the transaction is opened with the preferred offer? Well, the actual new loan amount is can be much more than what was stated in the contract. All cash, buyer turns around and gets a new loan. The final sales price is never the final sales price. Or the buyer tries to flip and sell the property immediately after opening. How this affects the escrow holder depends on how well versed the client's real estate representatives are in fighting the war. Let me give you examples of each of these issues all happening within a short period of time. Example one, a buyer offers for a 1,500,000 home. His contract says he will put 50% down. That is a good percentage of down payment, enough that the qualification for his loan should be easy. Well, then two weeks into the transaction, the loan agent calls and asks for an estimate closing statement for fees and charges. The loan amount is now 70% of the sales price. Instead of $750,000, his loan is going to be $1,050,000. This is a difference of $300,000. Do we disclose this to the seller that the contract has changed? Another example. A buyer makes an all-cash offer for $1,300,000 as a, for a rental property. Great terms. But even before the escrow paperwork has been generated, the loan officer calls and asks for a statement with a loan for $1,100,000. What? This is an all cash offer. So we advise both the real estate agent on the change in the contract and the buyer's agent points out that hidden in the contract, there is a check mark on a box that the, that the buyer has the right to get a loan if he so chooses, as long as his ability to get the loan does not hamper his ability to close escrow. So will the buyer qualify? Because this is a large loan. When we sent an email disclosure to all parties of this change in circumstances, the buyer's agent became very upset that we, as escrow agents, pointed out the change in the contract to his seller and his agent. Here's another example. The transaction is open and two weeks into a 30 day transaction, the buyer has not returned all the signed paperwork. So we call to follow up and their agent advises us that the buyer will turn in all the paperwork once they get all the inspections back to determine if they want to go forward. 
Well, a few days later, we are advised that the buyer would like the original sales price of 700000 to be reduced by 50000 due to the condition of the property. Apparently, the buyer was a builder and wanted to minimize his renovation costs. And as a final example, and this is a real kicker, a transaction opened up and we are waiting for the buyer's good faith deposit. The seller's agent follows up daily, but no money comes in. The seller has a backup offer which will not wait, but all opportunity is given to this original buyer to be uh, to put in his good faith deposit and make his inspections and perform. Well, five days into the transaction, the seller's agent receives a call from another agent friend. I thought the property was sold, his friend said. Well, apparently the friend found out that the same property was being marketed to be sold at a higher price by our buyer. Turns out that buyer was a flipper and wanted to be sure he found a buyer first before he committed to purchasing the property. Now, wouldn't you call this days of drama? I'm sure that all real estate agents out there gave stories, have stories to tell. A finalized contract does not mean it is done. Negotiations continue. The original offer changes. For the escrow officer, besides the additional work, we have to track all the changes. And then, of course, there's a concern that there's a matter of disclosure. When the contract terms have been changed, don't we have the obligation to disclose to the affected parties immediately upon notification? The other client, in this case, the seller, would need to have the opportunity as early as possible to make different arrangements like reviewing backup offers or making adjustments to his net financial bottom lines. Because if this offer does not pan out correctly, he needs to make the decision on another offer. This is not a renouncement of our neutrality. Getting angry with the escrow officer for making these disclosures is not acceptable real estate practice. This is Juliana too, and we appreciate your input on these particularly tricky situations that we find ourselves in from time to time. Be sure you join me in future episodes of Escrow in the Trenches, or look up our escrow tips on my Think Escrow YouTube platform. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in my next video.